Hi, welcome to Unit 2, Topic 1, Video 11, where we continue our look at non-right angle trig with the cosine rule. Okay, now let's look at the second part of this joy, and that is the cosine rule. So again, let me just sketch out a um, typical situation. So, clearly non-right angle triangle, but this works for right angle triangles, by the way. And we'll say that this is 11, this is 14, this is 68 degrees, and we want to calculate this value. So we could do this using right angle trig if we're clever. We drop a little perpendicular down here, we do stuff, and I'll prove the cosine rule later using that idea. But for now, the cosine rule is the way forward with this. And you'll see this break into our um, bearings questions as well with the sine rule. So here's the cosine rule um, in one of its forms, and that is that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. So let me just write down here, cosine rule. And the other variation is where it gets rearranged. This one's on the formula sheet. The other one's not on the formula sheet. But sometimes you also want to find an angle given you know all three sides. So I can take that cos c, rearrange for cos c, and I get cos c is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. It's not on the formula sheet, but you could certainly substitute a, b, and c in and rearrange and solve, so it's not too hard. Um, anyway, here I want to find x, and x is a side, and so I want to call x c, because that's where I'm heading. This is therefore capital C, which is great, because that's what we're dealing with. So it has to be the included angle between A and B. And in any order, this is my A and B. And so, of course, we get C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. So X squared is equal to 11 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 11 times 14 times cos 68. And that's where we head across to our trusty calculator again and do that calculation. 11 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 11 times 14 times cos 68. And that's equal to 201.62 dot dot dot. Now that is way too big for x, but it's a common mistake I see. People think they're finished now. That's our x squared value, not our x value. So I now need to take the square root, and x will be equal to the square root of that answer, and that's 14.1993693, and so inadvertently to two decimal places, that's 14.20. So just, and that makes more sense, we're happy with that 14.20 as our answer. Um, just be careful that you actually complete the question. But there's a pretty standard question. And now I might show you one involving an angle, if you'll bear with me while I clean the board. Well, thanks for bearing with me while I clean the board. And here's my question. Now, it's not, a, it's not like the sign video where we talked about one that might come up that tricks students. There's not a lot we can do here apart from apply context. So I'm going to run through this question using a formula should be pretty quick. So here's our formula, cos c equals a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. And that's not on the formula sheet. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the formula sheet formula and show you how we solve it. And I've even thrown in some big numbers here. But first I'm going to label my diagram, which you should always do. We're trying to find a missing angle, so we'll call this c. And therefore this is little c. And I'm just make sure that I get my um, a, b's and c's right. Now a and b are arbitrary, the order you pick them in. A, B, or B, A, doesn't matter, but C is important, it has to be opposite the angle. So I get C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C, and I've got a choice. I've read this straight off my formula sheet, I haven't memorised this, which I wouldn't suggest you do. I can rearrange to get to here now, or I can substitute in and then rearrange, and I'm really not too fussed with what you do, um, but I might actually just substitute in first, which I don't often do, normally I'd rearrange first. But this is a bit of fun, it gives you something different to look at. So if I substitute in first, and then I'll simplify, and then I'll rearrange and solve. 87 times 21 cos c. So I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying now. 
and that is that I get 102 and I'm going to square it. So I get 10404 and I'm going to get 87 and I'm going to square it. I get 7569 and I get 21 and I'm going to square it. 441 minus 2 times 87 times 21, 3654. 654 cos C. Now I'm going to simplify this and I get um, 10404 minus 7569 minus 441, which is equal to 2394 is equal to negative 3654 cos C. And therefore, cos C is equal to 2394 over 3654, and it's negative because I've divided by that negative there. So this is running through, evaluate, get my evaluation, subtract that one and that one from here, but I'm left with that, and then divide by this number and do a cheeky swap as well. I like the cos C on that side. Uh, so, divided by negative, 3654, so this is equal to negative 0 0.6551724138. I don't have to show that line, but if you're following along, it might help. C is equal to cos inverse of that, shift cos of my answer, and I get 130.9327 dot dot dot, which I'm going to write down as 130.9327. 3 degrees, and I'm happy with that because it's clearly opposite the biggest angle. Um, it's a pretty flat triangle. 130, great stuff. So there's the cosine rule, and later on, a couple of videos down the line, I'm going to prove it with the sine rule for you, and it's going to be completely optional. Some people like to see that. Um, all the best. Well, that was the cosine rule. I hope it all makes sense. Look at video 13 for the proof. But otherwise, make sure that you can just apply. All the best.